Hello again, it's Jaya Rose. I've come to you to show you how to make a few of the main uh, types of lines that we use in design drafting, architectural drafting, engineer drafting, in hand drafting and in creating architectural spaces. There are some typical lines that you'll see and they have meaning. I mean, lines are the language of design. I don't think I'm the first one to say that, but I'd like to say it because it's true. So the first line I'm going to draw for you is called an object line. I'm going to place my pencil right along the edge of the T-square. Notice my thumb moving as I roll my pencil across the paper. And here we have an object line. What is an object line? An object line is the line that shows you the the boundaries of an object, kind of the outside edges, uh, sometimes inside edges. Uh, when you look at a floor plan, you'll see that there will be some line weight differentiation and this object line weight is made with my 0.5 HB pencil, so it's soft and it creates a little more of a black dark line. And this is the line that we use uh, for example, for walls, when we're drawing walls. So I'm gonna make one more line. And you wouldn't think that you have to practice making a line, would you? <laughs> but with these tools, you definitely have to practice, learn the lines, learn how to present them um, cleanly, carefully, and with intent. I would say with intent is the most important thing so that it's clear where you intend to stop, where you start your line. Uh, those fuzzy edges are not welcomed in these kinds of drawings. It's a very specific type of drawing. So the next type of line that I'm going to show you is what we would call a hidden line, H-I-D-D-E-N. I wasn't sure if I articulated the D's or not, hidden hidden line, and these are lines that indicate the shape, the overall shape of an object that is con concealed by another object. For example, when you draw a dishwasher underneath a countertop in a kitchen, you will use a hidden line because if we're looking in plan view from the top view, we cannot see that dishwasher, but I still want to know that it's there. So that's how we position items. Uh, in our drawing. So I'm going to start with some hidden lines. Okay, so I've made some hidden lines. I think a couple things that I might mention is that the length of the hidden line has a small space in between. Shouldn't look like ants marching. Here, I'll draw some ants marching for you. Anybody know Dave Matthews? Okay, well, let me just do this. All right. These, no, are ants marching, <laughs> just so you know. Uh, so you can see that they're relatively s the same, similar in length, and that they have short spaces in between them. So this would be correct. This is not what you want. Sometimes our hidden lines even need to get smaller because all the lines in our drawings are hierarchical to each other. So we create a hierarchy by using different line types and different line weights. And that's what makes a, a drawing come to life. And these drawings can come to life, especially for a lover of these drawings, which I am. So sometimes my hidden lines might have to be that small. 
It really depends on how much area you have in your drawing that you have to indicate that you are showing something underneath. So if you have a long stretch, you can maybe make them bigger and more evident. Um, but if you're doing some smaller items in your plans, you may have to make them tiny so they show up as hidden lines within the width that you have available. Okay, so there's a hidden line. Now I'm going to draw a center line. So a center line is a long line, a short line, a long line, a short line, a long line, a short line. But notice that my long lines are approximately the same length. My short lines are approximately the same length, although they're not. This one got a little lazy. And that I have some space in between so you can clearly read that that is a broken line. Again, on your drawing, you may have a lot of space to make a center line. You may have a small amount of space to make a center line. On a drawing, your center line might just look like this. Right? It might just be one center line because you might just have only this amount of space to indicate that. But you always want to break the line. So in theory, this is a center line and then yes, this is a center line also. So whenever you have a line broken once, line broken once, you're looking at a center line. And we use a center line because when we are dimensioning uh, or positioning items in a space, typically any items that are round are dimensioned to the center. Other things are also dimensioned to the center, like for example, um, a 12 by 12 inch column might be dimensioned to the center right so in six inches from each side to show where the center is and then a note might describe it as a 12 inch by 12 inch column if that makes any sense which I really hope it does <laughs> okay I'm gonna stop here for now thanks